Hello Drone Racers, I'm Mark and today on Drone Racer 11 we're going to take a look at the ViFly Finder 2. If you saw my first review of the ViFly Finder, I had some requests. I want the choice with a version 2 to be able to be smaller than this and lighter than this with a smaller battery and say last two hours. How about now with the version 2 they did, they did none of that, but they did make some good additions. This isn't a alternate version of the ViFly, it's a complete replacement. This is the ViFly Finder. And this is the Finder version 2. And you see the difference there? Right there. There's one of them. There's one of the big differences. There's one other one too. Besides the differences though, they both have the same buzzer, which I really like. Really super loud buzzer. They have the same button for disabling it. They have the same battery. I do notice they're turned differently, but it doesn't affect the performance. They use the same connector, so if you replace a version one with a version two, you can just move the cable, which is convenient for this review. I did weigh them, they weigh exactly the same. So what is the difference? Well, the first difference you can see in the manual, the flight controller type A and type B are the exact same type of hookup we had with the version one. I'll link the original video up above so you can see how that hooked up. But now you have the option to connect it directly to a receiver. You can connect a PWM port to the buzzer. That's really, really nice because I want want to put this on my planes too. My planes I'm actually more likely to fly further away so having the capability to be able to add this to a plane I think is really important. The other difference is see that that is a, an LED. So we actually have two components here so we have a really bright nice blue LED there and then we also have a photo sensor right there. Let me show you what happens when we plug this thing in. Well nothing happens when we plug it in. It's when you unplug it that the magic happens. So it's here the red light is on telling me it's charging. This battery is not charged. It will just charge this battery while it is connected and running. This will operate like a standard buzzer so you can enable the buzzer uh, on your buzzer switch if you want to. But then when it comes unplugged, say you crash and your battery gets ejected like mine always seems to. Here it will start beeping and it beeps pretty quietly. It's not too bad, it's not obnoxious. It'll do this for about 30 seconds. There you go, then it gets super loud. I'm gonna end up yelling just because I'm going deaf. And so far it looks exactly the same as the version one. Let me do this. There we go. Turn off my studio lights and give it just enough shade from the windows and you can see how bright that is. You are not going to lose that. Make it much more convenient if you lose it out in the trees or wherever to be able to find this. I think this is a huge upgrade for this. Then to turn it off, you can do this at any point. You can uh, just push the button in for a second to five seconds and then let go and it will turn off. So the other thing I found is that time that it beeps at you quietly is just long enough that when you are flying and you land and you go to change out your battery you can get your battery disconnected and it will start beeping at you and it's plenty of time for you to go get your other battery get it connected get it mounted get it plugged in which will also disable the buzzer so you don't have to manually disable it every time if you just reconnect the battery that'll take care of it if for some reason you mount it somewhere where you can't get to the button you can also disconnect it reconnect it and then disconnect it quickly and that will disable it also for some of the other models that's the only option i really don't like that option i think that's a okay backup but i like having the button a whole lot more it's also supposed to have good neighbor mode so i think what happens i haven't run this long enough to really test it when it's dark out and the sensor can sense that it's dark, it won't beep super loudly. Now what happens is for from 30 seconds to two hours, it will beep every four seconds at max volume. After two hours, it'll only beep every 10 seconds. I think what happens, because I haven't experienced that myself and I haven't left it on for two hours, I think the not beeping at night only works after the two hours. I can't say completely, but it's supposed to be a good neighbor mode. So if you get this stuck high in a tree, you can see it. You just can't get to it. It's not going to beep for 30 hours overnight, causing everybody to go crazy. It'll do it for two hours, but not for the whole time. So then the next day you can hopefully go up and get it. And it might flash, so it might still cause some questions, but at least it's not going to be beeping. So I would still like to see them come out with a smaller, lighter version also. There's a lot of these coming out on the market, but I think they've come up with a really good version here. 
especially with the LED. It is bright. And with the addition of being able to stick it in a plane without a flight controller, yeah, I, I like that. I like that a lot. I definitely want to reserve a channel for that. So if you found this useful, leave a like and a comment down below. What do you think? What, what do they need to do next? So the LED is a big improvement. What should they do for the version three? So until next time, remember, this is one that's definitely best for me to record when there's no one else in the house and there's no way I was going to do this one at 5 a.m.